question. No need to question. If I can't see I know without a doubt. I know without a doubt. You know what I need. You never fail. This is Marriage Covenant 101, and I'm your host, Chatwick Cruz. Tamika Cruz, good evening. Well, 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 good evening. We thank y'all for tuning in to another episode, and today we're going to be talking about obtaining more and more Jesus. Have you ever felt empty, angry, depressed? Do your bills exceed your finances? Do you find yourself in some awfully stressful relationships? Do you find yourself in some awfully stressful situations? Is there pressure building up inside of you and you don't have any idea what to do? I came today to let you know more and more of Jesus is the answer to every question that you may have. Now, right now is the time to search for more and more Jesus. Jesus came to save, heal, and forgive. We need more and more Jesus on a daily. The Bible declares in Revelations 3 and 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, I will sup with him, and he with me. Jesus is knocking to your heart. Will you answer him? Ms. Cruz, you have anything to say about concerning that? Which one? What, what part? Answering the So today is not a good day, I don't think, for Marriage Covenant 101. Because the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? <laughs> and for real, it's not funny. This is not a lack of matter. I asked you, was there anything that did you have to add to No. Okay, you no. don't have anything no. you want to add. Mm-mm. Okay. You see, God been standing at the door of our hearts for so long knocking. He said he'll come in and sup with us. That means come in and eat with us. He'll dine with us. He'll be in the sit. He'll prepare a table for for us in the presence of our enemies. So I'm thanking God for what he's doing at this time. Um, You have to learn to trust Jesus for everything. Your trust in Jesus produces a desire for more and more of him. Do you want to say anything about producing a desire for more and more Jesus? You have to want it. It's personal. It's a personal relationship. And you have to want to have a desire. It, it Can't nobody else make you want to have a relationship with God. It's something personal that you feel like that you just need to get you to the next level. Okay. Sounds good to me. So... With that being said, we'll play that first video. Hello, Pastor. My name is Tamar. I grew up in church, but after I went away to college, I stopped attending. Well, that's to say the least. I can't remember the last time I prayed. All of my life, I've placed everything ahead of God. 
I've turned my back on him. That's the ultimate act of betrayal. So I guess my question is, how do I come back to him? After I've denied him and desecrated all his commands, will God truly forgive me? Hello, Tamar. I read your email thoroughly, and I understand that this is a tough time for you right now. But I would like to tell you that God never stopped loving you. His love for you, as well as his love for all of us, is unconditional. Jesus teaches us about God's unconditional love through the parable of the prodigal son. As told in the parable, the younger son squandered his wealth and only came to his senses after he was in great need. He was broke, starving, and living among animals. But after realizing the errors of his ways, he decided to return home to his father's house. The Bible puts it this way. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The father said to his servants, quick, let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead, but is alive again. He was lost and is now found. Tamar, what God is trying to tell you is simply this. He loves us in spite of us. He loves us in spite of everything. Tamar, I would love to pray with you. Here's my office number. Please feel free to call me. Hello, Tamar. Thank you for calling. You've made the first step. Let's pray together. Our kind, loving Heavenly Father, thank you very much for impressing Tamar to call. Father, you love us in spite of us, and we just want you to know we love you because you're a loving and you're a gracious God. been going through a lot in my life and you know it's things ain't been like it's supposed to be been running the streets so much i'm tired of running now seem like the church people been shining me and i just want somebody who profess salvation like miss cruz right here to lead me to the lord because i'm tired i'm tired of fighting Lead me to Jesus. Can you tell me something about Jesus that could change my life? <laughs> See, I, it's hard to get the sanctified people to take me serious. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I hang with the homies, drinking a little bit, doing our thing, and we can't get no people just to take us serious. And then when I see the church people, I bump into them in the community. They ain't like Jesus ain't for me. They take Jesus and they bottle him up and keep him to themselves. Share Jesus with me. Can you bring me to the cross? Can you teach me to know Jesus? <laughs> she, she thank you, son. Can you help me know Jesus? What must I do? to be saved. What must I do? Have you grown up in church? Is it about church or is it about Jesus? I ask him, what must do I do to be saved? Do you have, do you have a background in, in, in church? Have you been to church? What do they got to do with me knowing Jesus? I'm looking for Jesus. How what did you that? know, I mean, what, what, what do you know about Jesus? You say you're looking for Jesus. How do you know who to look for? Because I heard he can change me. I heard he can change me. And that's why I know I heard some people say it. 
late night. It was a man came on. He was hollering on, on BT, you know how them infomercials come on. And he said, when you're going through something, we need Jesus. Can you tell me how I can find Jesus? First of all, you have to call on him, you know, your own self. Yes. You have to um, get in a place to seek him for your own self. You have to cry out to God. And whatever it is you want from him, you have to make that request known. It's nothing that I can tell you that you can't do on your own. So ask me, answer me this. Are you saved? Yes, I'm saved. How must I be saved? You have to know Jesus. You have to accept Jesus. How? You have to accept him. You have to know that, confess it first. You have to confess it out of your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. And that you believe that he died. I believe that he died. And he rose again. And he rose again. For your sin. For my sin. Okay. And then you say that you're saved. You're I saved. am saved. Okay. Well, you're so, saved now. So, so now you have to depend on Jesus to help you get from point to A. To change me? Yes. So, he can, so you're telling me he can deliver me from crack cocaine? He can deliver me from homemongering. He can deliver me from Christian meth and all that other stuff. <laughs> can he deliver me? Yes, he can deliver Tell you from me anything. Tell me how much of a deliverer he is. Everything that you ever struggle with, yes. every single thing, it's already done. He, oh. he nailed it to the cross. So it's, it's not by your own strength or your power or your might, but it's by the finished work of Jesus Christ. And so by that, he said, it is finished. When he went to the cross, Everything is finished. Everything you ever struggle with, have struggled with, is struggling with, or will struggle with, it's already finished. So now you just have to depend on Jesus Christ to finish, finish the work that he started in you. See, now, I like that. I like that. And I believe it. Can you, so I'm going to lift my hands and can you pray for me, sister? Can you please pray for me? I can't see your eyes. Pray for me. Lord, we thank you right now for this soul, God. <laughs> we thank you right now. Wait a minute for this soul. And we ask you right now to help him to accept you, God. Yes, Lord. Whatever it is that he needs in you, Lord, lead him and guide him and direct him, Lord, on the right path. And I just thank you right now that you're going to lead him, you're going to guide him, God, and you're going to speak to him. You're going to give him thank dreams, you, you're going to give him visions, Lord as to what the will and the plan is for his life. Thank we you, just Jesus. give you praise and honor, and it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. I feel different. So, now, I feel like I'm convicted. So I feel like this don't mean me any good anymore. I feel like this doesn't mean me any good anymore. I feel like These don't mean me any good anymore. See, that's the point that I was trying to make. So once you are in Christ, you become a new creature. Stop witnessing to the outer appearance of man. The three-piece suit doesn't show the condition of the heart. The long dress dragging the ground doesn't show the condition of the heart. More and more Jesus would change the inside and it would convict the outside. So, if you see someone whose pants is hanging down by his knees or her knees, or you see them with their little short dresses on, it's not your place to judge them. It's not your place to do anything but offer them Christ. Play that next video, bro. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger 
and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, Jesus is for everyone. Jesus came to share himself with everyone. The outer appearance of man does not say what the heart screams. Out of the uh, out of the abundance of the heart, is that what he say? The mouth speaks? Out of the mouth. Out of the mouth. Okay. Well, say that to say this. Your inner man is the main thing that God is paying attention to. Sometimes there are things that look like they are destroying us. But I found out it's usually God trying to develop us. He is trying to mature you and wean you off that baby milk. He's putting you on the whole food of the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. More and more Jesus sets the tone for a stronger you. More and more Jesus opens the door for your miracles. That's true. That's right. Let me hear something. <clears throat> more and more Jesus does open the door for your mir miracles. But we have to have Jesus as our first and um, foremost in our life. He has to be our main priority. And we do need more and more of Jesus. We need him for our daily lives. He, we need him for our family. We need him for uh, the personal relationship. We need him for business adventures. We need to seek him for everything. We need more and more because I know me, I need more and more of him. And I just um, pray every day because I can get, you know, out of, out of the will quickly yeah, we are, we are. and can get sidetracked quickly. Yeah. So I know that I have to have more and more Jesus. I know that I have to continually pray and ask the Lord to order my footsteps because out of the abundance of the, ha the heart, that mouth is going to speak. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we have more and more Jesus in order that he can cleanse our heart. Yeah. The more we seek him, the more he will reveal us to us what's in our hearts and he will reveal the things that are not like him. So as we get more of him, more and more of Jesus, he will continue to show us who we are and what he's leading us to be in him. Yes, and once you get more and more of Jesus, you will not walk in a state of condemnation. No, I try to tell people to express this. In order to lead someone to Christ, you got to let them know that in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. You know, you think about a building. Once it's labeled condemned, the next step is to be torn down. So you got to think about it. We're not in the positioning. We are not the people of God. He didn't cause us. We're not the people of God that have been called 
to condemn anyone. We have been called to build up the kingdom of God. If we're building up the kingdom of God, then souls are constantly being added. How do you add souls? Through love and kindness. The same way that Jesus drew people is the same way that you have to do. Take a consideration. Consideration of humanity should become a burden to you. You should want to see everyone prosper. Even in the Bible, God said he wished above all things that we prosper and be in hell, even as our soul prospers. We have to stop making choices on who to witness to. We have to witness to everyone. Break God's word with everyone. When you're chasing more and more of Jesus, your faith overrides your common sense. You begin to learn to develop that Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6 relationship. And Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6, it says, um, You are trusting in God with your whole heart. You're leaning not to your own understanding. You're acknowledging Acknowledging him in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Hmm. The reason why some of us are going down dead-end highways is because we are leading ourselves. Ms. Cruz. That's just like um, you um, saying, okay, well, I'm going to go on a trip, and... You don't know the directions to where you're going, and you just get in the car and go, and you constantly are making wrong turns and getting off on the wrong exits and all that type of thing because you didn't, you know, you didn't go to God or you didn't study or you didn't even read to see where you were going. Jesus is the roadmap. He knows every direction. He knows every turn every twist, every left, every right, every yeah. turnabout, every stop, every yield. He knows everything that's concerning us. So yeah. we have to continue to trust him as the guiding light for us. He will show us what's ahead. He will show us what's behind. He will show us what's on the left. He will show us what's on the right. Yeah. But we have to trust him for yeah. our lives and know that he is in complete control. Awesome, awesome. And yes, he is. And with that being said, let's prosper. Let's pay some bills, pay some bills, pay some bills. We have Imperial Painting and Design Company. For more information, you can contact owner Jacoby Cruz at 334-733-0894. And we have Bright Future Children's Center, LLC, location one, letting our light shine. Call us at 334-774-3003. We are hiring and we're enrolling. Bright Future Children's Center. Bishop's Framing and Trophy, 141 East Broad Street, Ozark, Alabama. Um, Mr. Danny and Mikhail can be reached at 334 774-3784. And then we have Primerica, and that's Ursula S. Wilson. She can be reached at 334-798-9077. Contact her for all of your policy needs. Bright Futures, Children's Center 2, LLC. Um, this is 1962 Skipperville Road. Um, Ozark, Alabama, 334-443-0497. Thank you. And you have Loan and Order, the special mowing unit. Call Austin Mitchell at 334-733-9322. Uh, Ms. Caitlin Johnson. Um, Ms. Caitlin is our makeup artist. Um, it says making movie stars out of ordinary people. You can locate her on Facebook at 
Caitlin Johnson or by telephone 334-405-3428. Wow. Then we have Kennedy's Unique Savings. He's the soap man, shouted. You can contact him at 1-334-268-2149. He's at 102 South Main Street, Brundage, Alabama. Contact Kennedy's Unique Savings. We have Zents with Miss Merlin Burks. Um, she's also with Burks Travel Agency. You can reach her on Facebook and also again at Burks Tra Travel Agency at yahoo.com for all of your Zents and um, tra travel, needs. travel needs. Then you have Cruise Barbershop, a cut above the rest. We're located at 1110 Andrews Avenue, Ozark, Alabama. We thanks for all. We're so thankful for your support. Give us a call at 334-733-0615. And now we also have Miss Ursula Wilson as a diabetes educator. She can educate you on what diabetes is and how you can correct it and what you're eating and insulin or whatever. So give her a call again, 334-798-9077. And she is a mobile nurse. Then you have Trey Avent at State Farm. Like a good, good neighbor, Trey is there. Call Trey for all of your insurance policy needs. He has great quotes and great specials. Call Trey. Jolly Construction, LLC. Um, his goal is to make you happy as your name, as his name. Um, Jolly Construction at Chris at gmail.com or by telephone 334-618-3222. Then we have Work Family Farm, established by the grace of God in 2018. They're located in Ozark, Alabama. For all of your produce and poultry needs, Contact us at 910-920-7868. Call Brother Work. Um, we have True Praise with their single, I Believe. Um, they are out of Clow, Alabama, and I think I Believe is on um, iTunes. So check it out. Uh -huh. Then we have My Imperfect Self. Surrendering to God, written by Maria Kirkland and co-written by her husband Tyrone Kirkland. It's available for purchase now at Amazon.com. Platinum Motors. Um, the Platinum Motors family would like to encourage everyone to go out and get um, your COVID-19 vaccination. They want you to stay safe, and this is from Platinum Motors with Miss Tracy and Jennifer McLeod in Ozark, Alabama. Thank they can you. be reached at 334-774-4020. Thanks to all of our supporters. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And a correction, that number for Platinum Motors is 334-774-0240. But, okay, we back into it. Now we talking about more and more of Jesus. That's the answer, no matter what the question is. The blood of Jesus is the remedy to every problem we face. You will find that out that obtaining more and more of Jesus will cause success to find you. Once you obtain more and more of Jesus, you don't have to look for success. Success will find you. You don't have to search for happiness because happiness will find you. When you obtain more and more of Jesus, you will find yourself planted in an environment that values you. Instead of trying to explain yourself to other people who devalue your personal relationship with Jesus. Talk, sister. Yeah, that, that's another good one, too. Um, 
and, and instead of trying to explain yourself, that's right. Um, you don't have to explain yourself to anybody um, for your relationship with God. You know who you are. You know what you stand for. And if they don't understand it, that's their problem. Um, your thing is to be a disciple yes. for Jesus Christ, is to win other people, other souls into the kingdom of God. But you can't make anybody um, accept your belief or you can't make them believe how you believe. All you can do is tell them about Jesus Christ and that's their, it's on them then. So don't devalue what you believe in, in your faith walk because someone else doesn't believe the same way that you believe. Um, I just feel like you just need to just be that true disciple and let Jesus work on the inside yes. from the outside so that you can win souls. Awesome, awesome. Can I get a high five? Good job. So, oh, the Bible declares in Proverbs 18th chapter, the 16th verse, that your gift will make room for you and bring you before <laughs> great men. You see, more and more Jesus, it cultivates your gift. Say something, sweetie. More and more Jesus? cultivating your gift, that is just like we said before. The more Jesus you have, the more that he's going to um, reveal to you the plans. He's going to reveal to you your gifts. He's going to reveal to you what the thing is that you're supposed to be doing. So, yes, we're supposed to seek him. The more we seek him, the more we will know him. The more we seek him, the more that his will will be revealed to us. And he will lead us, and he will guide us in, in our gifts will we be revealed. And once you'll be like, oh, like a light bulb came on. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. God revealed this to me. God spoke. He showed me this. So the more we seek him, the more our gift will come alive. Great. Your gift must be accompanied by creativity. What are you believing God to do in your life? How close or how far will you go to receive the gift of God. It's not your ex that makes you right with Jesus. It's believing on the finished works of Calvary's cross that makes you right with God and striving, searching, chasing, won't stop until you get more and more Jesus. I want to give a special shout out to my pastor, Pastor Willie C. Burks, the Galilee Baptist Church, my Galilee Baptist Church family, the First Lady, Miss Lavonia Burks. I want to give a shout out to um, my father and my mother. I thank the Lord for the things that he's doing in the life of his people. Um, I thank God for that more and more Jesus will become to be uh, the mission of the saints. For when we grasp a hold on more and more Jesus, we add more and more people to the kingdom. It's time to increase the body count. Body count, you know, they talk about the body count is the people who maybe died on the battlefield. So I like that. Increase the body count because the flesh has to die for the spirit man to live. Meaning, die to the ways of this world, but accept all the principles of Christianity. Everything that Jesus done in his lifestyle, all of the ways that he produced, all of the ways that he acted, the things that he done that we know for a fact that happened, Leading up to Calvary's cross, after Calvary, with the resurrection from the dead, all of those acts is what we got to believe on until we grasp the concept of more and more Jesus. It's a daily walk. He increases in us daily. Be mindful of how you treat others because Jesus is watching. 
And that lets him know the way you treat your fellow man, that you really is chasing, that you really looking to be more and more like him, and that you really wanting more and more of him. Let's make that a heart's desire. Let's make that a mission. You want to give a shout out to anybody before we... I'm good. Um, just um, another thing is I just feel like that we as a whole, as a nation, that we need to continue to pray um, for this virus that's, that's covering the land. We need to pray that people will turn their hearts back to God mm -hmm. and sincerely repent of sin because there's definitely something wrong that this virus has been plaguing the, the world for over a year now. So we need to really turn our hearts back, our minds back, um, our souls back to Jesus Christ and just pray that he will heal this nation. There's so many people sick, staff members, family members, so many people are dying and leaving this world. But we all know that we're going to pass through from this life. Um, but we need to make sure that we're in a place with God. Our hearts, our minds, you know, we're ready. We have to be ready when he comes. So I just uh, want us as Christians, as husbands, as wives, men of God, women of God, um, we just need to continue to pray. He said if his people, which are called by his name, shall humble ourselves and pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, he will hear us and heal the land so that we need to make sure that we are up praying, not sleeping, but we have to sacrifice something. We have to discipline ourselves to awake in the mornings before day, pray over our families, pray over our children, pray over our marriages, pray over our finances, pray over our health, pray that God will cover our bodies from sickness, diseases, harm, accidents, pray over our cars, pray over our finances, our businesses, everything, our minds, our will, our emotion, anybody that we come in contact with, we need to continue to pray. He said, always pray, never stop praying, never cease to stop praying, always have a prayer in our mouths. So we need to just pray that this world can be healed yes. and that Jesus will turn back the hands of the enemy. Yes. You know, things happen to people loved ones, friends, all kind of people who's connected to you when you stop lifting them up in prayer. The enemy heard the words that came out of your mouth when you was praying for them long hours and you was always keeping them before God and say, God, I need you to take care of this person and I need you to watch over them and their families. I need you to come through for them every time that they need you, Lord Jesus, that we need you to be there for them. And then all of a sudden you stop. And in time, maybe the person passed. Because right now it's so, it's so, ooh, this plague that we're involved in, this pandemic they call it, this, this coronavirus, is so scary because, and the Bible said that, you know, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So I, I said the word fear because it's sweeping the nation in fear because of the alarming rate of people that's dying from the disease. The Bible also said, we're taking it back to more and more of Jesus, said to live as Christ. To die is gain. So you win when you die in Christ. Let's keep that, let's put that out on the table. But make sure that you know that if you something happened to you today, where would you spend your eternity? Because remember, it's not death is not the final word. It's not over at death. I don't care who have given you falsified information and what you have indoctrinated yourself with. 
It's not over after death. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So remember, it's somewhere else. You go from there. But if you love your family and you want to see your family live and taken care of, make sure you go to God on their behalf. Stand in the gap for them. Now, if there's anyone under my, the sound of my voice that want to know how to receive more and more Jesus, like you might have missed when my wife said it, when I had my gold teeth on and my snapback. You might have missed it when she said it. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly how. You have to confess your sins to the Lord. Say, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned against thee. Then you have to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And that's all it takes to be saved. Now, right now I want you to repeat after me. If you at home or if you're watching by YouTube or if you're watching it on Troy Cable Vision, wherever you're watching it at, just repeat after me. Say, Father God, I thank you for who you are. I believe that you live. I believe that you died. I believe that you rose again just for me. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me of every sin and every transgression. Forgive me for the things that I did knowingly and the things that I did unknowingly. Forgive me, Lord. Make me one with you. Thank you that I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You just received Jesus Christ. Now I want you to go to your Bible and read John 3, 16. Read Romans 10, 9. And let God do exactly what he have chose you to do from the beginning. Walk into your purpose. Marriage Covenant 101. We thank you guys for being a part tonight. And good night.